In this photograph here, I use Luminar Neo's new Gen Arrays tool to create a version without any people in. I have two versions which side by side look very similar. However, if I zoom in, we're gonna see that the quality of one version is far superior than the other. So if you want to get the best quality out of Gen Arrays, you have to know this. Hi guys, Anthony Turnham here. I'm back with another look at Gen Arrays. In the last video, I showed several examples of how this fantastic tool can be utilized to remove objects from our photos that shouldn't have been there when we took them and put in a really convincing and believable background. However, there were a couple of examples where the erased pixels that were replaced just didn't hold up under 100% magnification. And in this video, I'd like to explain why that is and how we can overcome it. So to unpack what's going on here, we really need to understand a little bit about the technicalities of what's going on behind the tool when we use it. So in a nutshell, we make a selection over an object that we want to erase. When we click erase, this picture or that component from the picture is sent into the cloud where the computations are done, not on your computer, over there. So you need an internet connection for this to work. The AI diffusion model that is running this in the background is going to create a replacement set of pixels that is gonna come back into our photo with a maximum resolution. And it's that maximum resolution that is the hurdle for us at the moment. Currently, we have a 1536 on the long edge resolution restriction. So that comes out to about two megapixels. And just to put that in perspective, that is actually twice as much as what Adobe is currently producing. They have a 1024 by 1024 pixel area that gets returned in their generative fill tool. So we have twice as many pixels coming back to us in Luminar Neo, which is great, but it is still a limitation. So let's say you use Generase to paint out an object which is three times larger than what can be processed and sent back. Well, you're still gonna get a result. However, that result is gonna get stretched three times. So the pixels are going to be stretched and scaled up. And that is why we get a lower resolution quality that doesn't match our initial photo. So what can we do about that? Well, I've kind of looked into solutions and let me show you an approach that we can use to work around it. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this 24 megapixel file that I featured in the last video. If I zoom into these tourists all stood in front of the tree, you can see that we've got a pretty good resolution going on here. And if I show you the version where I actually replaced all those people using Generase in the last video, at first glance, it looks pretty good. However, if I zoom in, here we are at 100%, you can see exactly what I'm talking about, about the lower resolution. Yes, the AI has produced some leaves, some rocks, and the water as well that matches pretty well from a zoomed out perspective. However, as soon as we get in nice and close, let's dive into 200% to really show this off, it just doesn't hold up. But let me jump over to another version of the photo that I also use Generase for, and let's zoom into this same area here, and you can see that we actually have the correct resolution. Well, how did I manage to do that and get a different result? So where did I go wrong? Well, in the first example, I got my brush, I marked over these guys, I said I wanna get rid of them, and then I added to my selection by erasing these guys as well. And when I'd finished selecting everybody, I just hit erase. But let's just think about this logically to understand where this is going wrong. This is a 24 megapixel photo, so it's 6,000 along the bottom edge by 4,000 on the tall edge. So if we're 6,000 wide, you can straight away see that we're probably at about two thirds of that width, so around 4,000 pixels wide, which is nearly three times above that pixel limit that this tool has. So a much better approach to work with this tool would be to get it to work in sections. So rather than selecting a whole heap of people all at once, you just individually select a block of people that fall within the correct size. So let me show you this layer here. This is 15 by 36, and that actually shows you the square size in relation to the photo that this tool can work to. And conveniently, I've also done a comparison with Photoshop. So you can see the Photoshop square is way smaller so even if I was just to paint out these guys, the Photoshop tool would have to upscale the result. Whereas if I put the 15 by 36 version that Luminar Neo creates, we can get a pretty much perfect 100% replacement of those guys. However, if we come over here, you can see that it only just covers this lady here. We could work on this guy individually, 
and we could try and work on these guys. But just for the fact that she's slightly taller than the height of this 1536 square, it is going to upscale the result ever so slightly, but it's barely gonna be noticeable. Another way to think of it, if I just hide this layer and show another overlay, I've just broken this down into 1536 pixel strips. So basically, I know that my photo is 6,000 pixels wide. I have 1,500 pixels to play with. So basically, providing the thing I want to erase doesn't take up more than a quarter of my photo, I'm good to go. Let's take a look at the tool in action and I'll do it on that waterfall example and see if I can't get a much better result this time than we got in the last video. So let's jump into this photo that we dealt with last time. We're gonna click on Generate, And unlike last time where I painted over every single person that I wanted to remove and do it all in one, this time I'm just going to focus on one person at a time. So once I've got that selection made, I just hit Erase and we'll see what Luminar Neo comes back with. Now, one thing you need to be mindful of is that you do need a bit of patience with this tool because obviously we're sending a request to the cloud, it's doing some computations, and then it's coming back and putting that information into our photo. It is a bit time consuming. And another thing to bear in mind is using this particular approach is even more time consuming because rather than just doing one big selection of everybody and saying, hey, work that out and then you're done, we're going to break it down into individual objects we want replaced, and that's gonna give us that higher quality in the end. And to check that we're happy with the result, we just toggle the before and after of the eye tool here, and that's a pretty good result. I'm happy enough with that. So let's move on. Now, one mistake you want to avoid is we don't want to start making a selection over this guy to erase him without doing something first, because if I do this and then hit erase, What's gonna happen is it's actually going to include the area of all of this guy plus what we've already raised here. So obviously we're increasing the size of the request that we're asking of the AI, potentially pushing it beyond that 1536 pixel limit. So what you want to do is actually reset the selection before you make the selection of your next object. So that's what I'll do now. Just select this guy, make sure I get the tripod there, get his leg, come up here, nice and simple and just hit erase and see what we get this time. So as I said, the requests that are being made of the AI is going on in the cloud, not on your computer. So if you want to access this tool, you do need to have a subscription to Luminar Neo or the creative pass that they're doing. And if you wanna get either of those things, you don't have them yet, I've got a link in the description below with a discount code. They're doing a Halloween special at the moment, it's like 31% off. Um, but if that's not running, I have another code for you as well. So either way, check it out if you don't have that already. Right, let's have a look what the AI did for us here. Here's our before, here's our after. Looking pretty good. Like, I'm not sure about the tripod aspect of this, but I'm not worried about that. What I'm caring about is the rocks, and currently they're looking really good. If we come into 100% so that we can really appreciate the quality of what's going on, they look pretty much perfect to me. Okay, and again, I'll just come in, reset the selection. Now I'm happy with that, and just make sure that I select this person make sure they're fully covered, and I can reduce the size of my brush with the bracket keys, and I can hold the shift key, click once here, and shift and click down the bottom here, and that makes a nice straight line. Hit erase, and away Neo goes again. Okay, let's take a look at our before and our after. This really is progressing nicely, guys. To me, this looks great at 100% on my 4K screen, but just so you can appreciate it a little better on YouTube, let me just uh, zoom in here. Here we go, 200%. Here's our before, here's our after, before and after. It's pretty much perfect, guys. And once you're happy with the result, you just click save. Right, you get the idea, so I won't go through erasing every single person with this photo. Let me just put on screen now the result. What we had originally get in gen arrays to remove every single person all in one hit versus what we're able to do here, keeping those array selections within that 1536 pixel limit. I know technical information isn't everybody's bag, but I really feel that this is something that you should know in order to get the most out of this gen arrays tool. I hope this video has been helpful to you and if it has, please let me know in the comments. If you liked it and want to see another video from me, you can check that one out there. And if you haven't subscribed already, click that one up there. Thanks so much guys. I'll see you in the next one.